Where does the time go? Seems like Christmas was just here. We're talking Kids Incorporated, rocking the new year. Hit it. It was 1986. Angel hair pasta and chocolate mousse were happening food trends. That's What Friends Are For was the top song on the charts, and Kids Incorporated rocked out a clip show with some epic jams. I'm your host, Jerry D., with another episode of Totally Rad Christmas, the podcast that talks all things Christmas in the 80s, toys, movies, specials, music, and fads. If it was gnarly during Christmas in the 80s, we got it covered. Now, joining me are two Totally Rad Christmas all-stars. From Cult Film Club at Crestwood House, it's Sean Robert. Sean, what's happening? Nothing much, but I just I just want to let you guys know that no matter what we do, I just want us to all to still be friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, it's, it's good to talk with you again. Now, my next guest you'll know from the Christmas Podcasts podcast, it's hype man, Sean Sotka. Sean, how's it going? Great, Jerry, just uh, jamming out here with my guitar and not really knowing how to play. It's okay. As long as you, it's not a guitar, I think you're fine. <laughs> well, I got one of those too. I'm just not using it right now. I hear you. So how you guys been? It's been a while. Doing good. Oh, just getting over the Christmas rush. Oof. Go ahead. Doing, doing good Christmases. Yeah, we uh we got our my five year old daughter the uh, LOL surprise fashion house thing. I don't know. It's it's larger than the addition we built on our house. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those things are massive. We got our daughter a Barbie uh dream house like a few years ago and we have no room for it. It just doesn't yeah. fit. So yeah, I feel I, I definitely hear you. <laughs> yeah, Christmas was fun. It, but you know, it's New Year's time. We got to get ready for New Year. We're having a huge party at the place. And so it's, you know, we got to see what we can do here. But before we get into our topic for tonight, I want to do my new segment, hit me with the toaster. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I want you guys to hit me with the first answer you can think of. You don't have to think too hard about it. Uh, so here it is. Let's say Renee is Scrooge and her sister Stacy was Marley. Recast the Ghosts of Christmas with Gloria, the Kid, and Ryan. Who wants to take this first? You, Sean, or me, Sean? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll take it and I'll go in reverse order. Uh, Ryan is definitely going to be the Ghost of uh, Christmas Future, um, just because uh, Monster Squad ties. And <laughs> honestly, I think that's what he would pick. I don't know. I just think he's got a little bit of darkness inside of him. I dig it. That actually seems like it fits. Yeah, I can I can get behind that one. I get Ryan, and then get Kid as present. Because he's that fun-loving, bubbly, and then yet can be just get in your face type person that just kind of yeah he's definitely jovial yeah mm-hmm. I hear you. That, so then least... Gloria would be passed right on yep yeah I agree with that uh, but only if they wear those spangly costumes <laughs> 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 all right let's say Kids Incorporated is in Whoville what song do they sing Christmas morning after their presents have been stolen uh, their theme song. <laughs> all right <laughs> without thinking too hard about it that's all i can come up with <laughs> i hear you okay <laughs> well looking looking through the uh the songs that they covered uh in prep for this show i know that there's at least like five songs singing about respect so <laughs> i'm assuming they sing a song about respect to the grinch <laughs> totally <laughs> and finally let's say you're having a christmas party at the place what dessert do you bring ice cream definitely not ice cream Definitely not the ice cream that. <laughs> oh no, ice cream. Uh, ice cream. Yeah. Well, so that's that's just a way for our our listeners to get to know y'all a little bit better. So thank you. But speaking of ice cream, we're talking Kids Incorporated. Rock in the new year. Now, 
I don't remember this particular episode. I remember Kids Incorporated a ton, especially the first two seasons. But I didn't remember this one. What do you? What's your guys' history with Kids Incorporated? Like, what do you remember about it? Why don't we start with the Cult Film Club, Sean? Okay. Yeah, I know I watched this a bunch, um, but it was like it was like a treat whenever the uh, the Disney free preview weekends would happen. Oh right. Um, so I think by the time I ran into the show, it was it had been picked up by Disney or whatever, mm-hmm. and that was like my go-to like for you know if we get three days to have it's like as, as many kids incorporated episodes as i could uh, cram in um <laughs> that was like back in the day when it was airing uh right. later it was basically just i've i get obsessed and go down rabbit holes looking up uh different song performances just because uh i'm such a monster squad fan and uh just watching ryan lambert rock out to uh to these cover songs is is <laughs> hilarious i've gotten the chance to meet him um uh, once and uh, I got to hang out with him in the green room at a at a convention or whatever and I don't know it's it's surreal going back and watching the the video performances especially knowing that he went on to have like a, a career as a musician so 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 he actually played and and sang his parts he definitely sang his parts um and I know he can play guitar I just don't know if he could play at the time because right. if you if you if you if you just watch his fingers on the frets it's like woof. <laughs> I did notice that, but I figured it was just because they were filming. Uh, oh. Usually, stuff like that, they have studio musicians anyway, and they just mm-hmm. use the voice. Um, I know the Monkees did that as well, and, and yeah. of course, we talked kid video. So. Well, heck, I mean, even the Beach Boys did that, so. Right, right. <laughs> it's it's yeah. just a part of the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got you to gotta do what you can do. What about you, Sean? Uh, me and my buddy uh, would watch it. I mean, I think, I think we watched Kids Incorporated coming out. Uh, when they first came out, because I remember watching this with my buddy, and then the, the the first the guy that Ryan replaced basically. I mean, oh, um, I kind of liked him. Um, Jerry Cheryl or Cheryl. Yeah, 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 and I forget what it was. Mickey. That was his Mickey character's right. name, right? Um, and then when Ryan, I mean, I liked Mickey the best, even though he was only on for one season. Mm. He just, I, I just like how he performed better than Ryan. Not that Ryan couldn't perform. I just, I just think with the age, I, I liked it, but. To be, to be honest, though, I like even liked Ryan better than anybody afterwards. But my buddy and I, we watch these almost anytime they came out and we watch them. And I remember one of my first TV crushes was probably on Renee, even more, yeah. over, even, <laughs> even more over Martika. So, but uh, I watching this episode, I think I saw it live. I don't remember watching it live, but a lot of this came back, mm. um, especially with the ice cream and then having to go and redo uh, or re- uh, rearrange where they were going to perform that mm-hmm. just, it clicked with me. So I'm thinking I saw it. I just, it didn't strike home with me to remember. Oh yeah. I remember the whole thing, but I, it, it, do, it did really ring a bell looking at it again. So this is strange because I loved kids incorporated. Uh, like I, the first season I remember watching, uh, I know we watched it in syndication before it was on Disney. And then I know once Disney picked it up, I, I definitely watched the first three seasons again. I don't remember this particular episode, as I mentioned, but I, I was kind of with you there. Um, Sean, I was more of a Mickey fan at first because his name was Jerry and my name was Jerry and there's not a whole <laughs> lot of Jerry's in the world. So uh, and that's literally the only reason why I liked him. And when Ryan came out, I was like, oh, man, who's this guy? Where's Mickey? <laughs> but then like Ryan became like my my favorite. And I like him actually better than <laughs> than Mickey. He was just cool. And then seeing him in Monster Squad was like it added to his level of cool, you know. So uh, I was I was pretty jazzed to, to go I back never, and watch it. I out. never really watched Monster Squad enough. I think I saw it maybe once to really oh, remember man. that that. Yeah. Um, you're missing out Ryan it's, was in there so yeah i'll have to go back and, and see that thing again. i remember bits and parts and i think that's the one with wolfman's got nards yeah yeah yeah, yeah so, he was like he was the cool guy like uh, out of the whole you know gang and so to see him like go back like like you were saying sean to see him go back and like you know wear these uh like blue uh sequined <laughs> you know tuxedos lots of blue sequined tuxedos <laughs> <laughs> and just just jamming on guitar and, and singing, you know, wild, wild life, but <laughs> it's just like something else completely. Uh, and yet he still has like that air of cool about him, you know? So 
for me, it was just, it was one of those things that I, I just, I loved. I loved the songs. It was like this and kid video that was kind of like my big introduction to music. My, my dad and, and my brother and I would sit and watch MTV, but I never really paid much attention to it. I would usually be playing Transformers as well, but I would sit through kid video and I would sit through Kids Incorporated just because they were singing our, they were singing the songs I like to sing uh, and hear on the radio, but they were our age. So it was like, this is super cool. These guys get it. Uh, and it was just, it was, I don't know, I liked it better than watching MTV. But other than that, you know, this was just, it was a fun show. And the, <laughs> this particular episode, as I mentioned earlier, there's like no plot. There's not a lot of plot to this, uh, to, to this. It's really just a clip show. And there's a very loose connection with all of these. It's, they They find their way to tie them together through New Year's resolutions. But other than that, I mean, it's just like, you could be watching the Cosby show, doing a clip show or, or any, you know, anybody else. And, and you'd get the same effect. Um, this one just happens to have music. And it's like two years of clip shows having to think that it's one year back. Right. Exa- exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, you go back to, they, when, took some, when, they take some stuff from season two as well. When Ryan first joins the group. Right. Because I mean, you got to believe, okay, Ryan's going to grow that much in one year. And you look at him from that first, when he first joins to where he is in this show. I mean, it's like, yeah, kids grow fast, but I don't think they grow that fast. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, I guess. So Kids Incorporated, yeah, the pilot was filmed in 83, shopped around, no one picked it up, so it was sold to syndication, which began airing in 84, and then Disney bought it out in 86. They kind of re-edited uh, a, the pilot to include uh, Rasan Patterson, you know, the kid who's like one of the main stars. He wasn't in the original cast. And from there, they just added on and as kids aged out they brought in others like jennifer love hewitt there was actually quite a few guest stars as well like um um, what's the name jeff cohen i remember that one like he plays a practical jokester i don't know if you remember that episode i actually don't remember (laughs) that one i mean i'm gonna start hanging out with you guys bring a little laughter into your life you see i'm gonna sing in your band i know did he have a crazy hat because i remember every time he would guest star on like TV shows or sitcoms and stuff like that. Like he made it a point to wear some kind of a crazy hat. There's like two <laughs> different episodes of Family Ties where he guests and his, his hats are ridiculous. I want to say he did. I think he did. <laughs> but I, he was like his way of, of coping, I guess, uh, for bullies. And so mm. he would instead would just play these practical jokes on people. And in the end, of course, they tell him they don't like his jokes and they all become friends. <laughs> but but like... <laughs> yeah th- exactly but like the show was so crazy and all over the place which is part of the reason why uh why jerry Sherrill left was you know there was like aliens involved and then there was uh, like one where stacy makes friend with the ghost and i mean it was just like all over the place story-wise i think there was a leprechaun in, in, <laughs> in the episode so because of that he kind of left and and we were gifted with uh with ryan lambert but other than that, I mean, this particular episode, like you said, it really brings us back the the years prior. And I mean, let's just jump right in. I'm I'm ready to 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 just dive into it because, as I said, there's not a whole lot of plot. Basically, the kids are rehearsing the shows, and we'll talk about the songs as well. But uh, they're rehearsing for this big New Year's Eve party. They're singing Wild Wild Life, and they all kind of take turns singing it. And then they sing Wanna Be Starting Something, which I think the kid sings lead on that one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's when, like, they're all excited and they get the news. Riley, who's like the soda jerk at this and the shop. owner of the place. I don't think he's the owner. Well, like, the he's probably the main guy on the lease. <laughs> it could be. But anyway, he also happens to be an inventor. I mean, he gets replaced by a robot in one episode. But he's an inventor. He invented like this ice cream machine that was going to revolutionize ice cream. And instead it exploded. Yeah, well, it blew up last night. And there's ice cream all over the ceiling, the stage, the floors. Even in a couple of ice cream dishes. Oh, well, at least something went right. Oh, it was a disaster. Then it started to melt, and it messed up the electricity, the plumbing, the wax job on my floor. Everything. Here's some uh, Kids Inc. stuff that didn't get too creamed. Afraid I had to close the place for the cleanup. Uh, 
party is canceled. And so the kids are just super bummed because they're not going to be able to do their their show. They kind of get mad at him. They chastise him, and he tries to apologize, and they don't even accept it. And that's where we get our beginning of our clip show. And <laughs> it's literally they're in the rehearsal studio, which is uh, I called the garage. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The place, the garage. Not a lot of thought going into these names here. <laughs> well, the place has an asterisk in it where it was supposed to be palace and they took palace. the A out, so it's place. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But Stacy happens to find their old New Year's resolutions, which they all wrote on like the scroll. <laughs> I don't it know. It looks about like you guys. they got like six inch lettering on it too. <laughs> I never wrote my resolutions on a scroll. <laughs> it's definitely changing my opinion for how I should do those going forward, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I maybe that's why I never keep my resolutions. Right. Because <laughs> I never I never just inscribe them on a nice scroll. You need something that you can nail to your door. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. If you can't nail it to your door, that's it. You're, it's it's never getting done. <laughs> uh, but she finds their resolutions. And so they start going through them. And Ryan's resolution was make new friends and join Kids Incorporated, which uh, they mentioned that it didn't start off easy. It took him a while. And so it cuts back to New Kid in Town, which is a uh, season two, episode one. And um uh, they sing show some respect. I think uh, they even sing tough all over, if I recall correctly. They do. And that's honestly, I'm just going to say right now that that's my favorite song that they cover in yeah. this episode. Oh, I agree. They they do it really well, too. Yep, they do. Mm-hmm. I made a resolution and I plan to keep my word. But I need you to make it work. You got to read my message and understand what's on my mind. But not to see. Show some respect. I was never a huge uh, fan of the original. That's uh, what Tina Turner, I think, does mm-hmm. it. And so it just, I was never that familiar with it, but the John Cafferty tune, I know. And yeah, they, they do a, a slamming job. They do better than I think the uh, Talking Heads one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they talk about how Ryan was kind of hard to, to get used to, and but eventually his resolution came true. Yay. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. On a TV show, who knew? Plot trope number whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so let's see. I think next is Renee and her resolution. They read hers. Was to be a better sister. Of course, Stacy's like, uh... after, after they jostle a little bit before she reads it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have that. And so they talk about a time where the kid and Stacy were making fun of Renee because she entered a poetry contest. And so they kind of like laughed at her and and, uh, made fun of her poem. And she ended up winning and she won a gourmet lunch. (laughs) That's got to be like the strangest prize ever for a poetry contest. (laughs) I love that. And and I love that. And I love the fact that she's going to punish them by not letting them eat the lunch. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I don't recall what was served. Uh, It goes back to the episode, No Rhyme or Reason, but I just didn't get to... Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get to rewatch that one. So I, I don't know what they served, but it's like, you know, they have cloches and silver platters and there's, <laughs> you know, just lines and lines of waiters, uh, wait staff. I mean, it's, it's like a big to do and Stacy and, and kid are left out and they, they sing, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. And like on the la na 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 part, that's when Stacy and the kid kind of like stick their tongues out. And then... Yeah. Yeah. They do that kid thing. <laughs> It was, yeah, I don't know. In the end, of course, it's Kids Incorporated. It's like Full House. You got to resolve it in in 23 minutes. And so she lets them eat the lunch and they're apologize and it's all good. And because of that, uh, I guess she kind of achieved her resolution, question mark. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I don't know if letting your letting your kid sister eat is uh, counts as being nice to her, then I guess she she's nice to her. Maybe they're not fighting as much now versus then. Who knows? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Okay, so the kid is next. And, of course, his is just... To be a superstar. Which is, I guess, like all of his resolutions ever. <laughs> and this is where I think they sing Material Girl. Is that right? 
No, no, it's uh, I'm coming out. That's what it is. Coming out, yeah, from, yeah, from yeah, yeah. So they sing "I'm coming out," the uh, the Diana Ross song, and it's this is where I guess Gloria had won a contest, and the kid, you know, she was supposed to have an interview, and the kid kind of like tried to horn in on the interview. Yeah, stole all her glory. <laughs> Which all she did was win like a raffle. So I mean, yeah. how I don't I don't understand like what he thinks he's getting out of this deal here. And how come, how come whenever I win like a local raffle, like reporters don't come to interview me? You know, that's what I'm, I'm curious about. I have never been interviewed by a reporter. <laughs> At least that's not like for one something of my, fun for that. Hey. That's a bucket list thing, right? Right. <laughs> that's a, yeah. yeah. Hopefully for something good. But yeah. uh, winning a raffle is definitely a new one. So she sings, yeah, like I'm coming out and he kind of horns it. And she's like all made up and again, sequin gown. And he's just like trying to get in front of her and he's got like his little suit on. I mean, it's this dude. He's just he's like hungry for stardom. <laughs> and, you know, I, I can't say I blame him, but yeah. also, you know, I will say it's consistent. Like when they go back and they do the uh, the Ryan Lambert flashback when he joins, it's like it's kid who's basically like, hey, stop getting in my way. <laughs> I'm <laughs> the lead right. here. That's <laughs> that's right. And the kid was actually new to the group as well, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. If you, especially if you go back to the re-edit pilot, it was like the four of them. They kind of joined Jerry's group, or not Jerry, Mickey's group, and then uh, and then the kid kind of comes in a little bit later. But apparently, he's trying to take over, uh, you know, David Ruffin style from The Temptations. But <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so I'm coming out is from the episode material, girl. So. Anyway, Gloria decided that she wanted to, her resolution was that she wanted to um, face problems better and not be afraid. And she talked about when uh, having her tonsils removed and that she was really scared because she thought she was going to lose her voice and not be able to sing with Kids Incorporated anymore. That was like, like her big fear. And so uh, she sings Some Things Are Better Left Unsaid. And then we actually get an original song called That's What Friends Are For, not the one... uh, that Dion Warwick sings later on and that the kids incorporated sing the next year as well. I want to thank you for being a good friend, for always being there. When I feel left out, you're an open door. That's what friends are for. I thought it was okay. I like Martika. I like when she sang Toy Soldiers. Oh, yes. That her, was my I, favorite from Martika. I liked her album. I thought it was a, a solid album, even though, you know, that really Toy Soldiers was the only single, but also like, you know, it's it's nothing special. And this kind of reminded me of the album. Like, it was just good, solid singing, but nothing stand out about it, you know? Mm-hmm. I just remember when Toy Soldiers came out and I was like blown away that it was Martika from Kins Incorporated that I used to watch. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. That, that that blew my mind. And then, of course, you come come up when Stacy goes by Fergie and she's all grown up now. And it's like, really? That's little Stacy from Kids Incorporated? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Something does not compute there. It, it doesn't oh. add up. But yeah. no. I thought it was wild on the Toy Soldiers song that on the uh, the backing vocals, all the kids singing is pretty much everyone else from the cast. That is, they yeah, came I know out to help did her. That, yeah, um, but <laughs> except Ryan Lambert, who <laughs> was probably too busy doing uh, Monster Squad or Monster Squad related things. Yeah, well, yeah, could be. Well, he stayed on Kids Incorporated for what, like another year, I think, after Monster mm-hmm. Squad. Yeah, yeah, he was there through '88. Right, right. The show itself ran all the way, I believe, until 92 with like a couple of hiatuses in between. But I'll be honest, after after this season three, I kind of didn't really watch a whole lot of it. But I remember I remember him staying on for like another year after that. So I do remember catching a few episodes here and there after the this this main core here was on. And she's like, yeah, this is isn't is it. I, I don't. I, I guess I just didn't like how they all gelled together as much as I liked these guys, even and with Jerry and even with Ryan. They all seemed to gel really well, even yeah. though even though the writing wasn't like the best in the world. It's just you could tell they 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 got along. I mean, at least as well as they can, and put on the best they could with what they had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's hard on shows like this like if you were a fan of like you can't do that on television you know usually you have like right. your core right. group of kids that you're yep. like okay now these are the ones that i love and sure there was like moose who was there for the Forever. majority of the Seemed show like, yeah. right 
Yeah. But but like it's it sucks when like you tune in and it's like, oh my god, I don't recognize who are these people. Yeah. Who are these kids? Well, it's like Saturday Night Live, you know. You I have was like, just thinking that <laughs> you have your cast for like five or six years with a couple of new guys here there, and then usually they're gone. And mm-hmm. you know, and when, I was a huge fan mass of changeovers. It's like okay, like this group now. It's like I have no clue. I mean, my, the last one I had was like the Farley Spade Sandler. That oh cool man, group. Those, that was I like love. I love that core group. Besides the originals too, because I like the originals, right? right. Like Chase and 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 uh, Belushi and all them, but. And I like the Sandler group. And then all of a sudden you get these here and it's like, eh, yeah. I don't like this core as much as I like the other ones. There, you get one <laughs> or two standouts in there you do like. Right. Um, they, they do always have those, but it's not like the core like they had there. Well, it was really weird seeing Stacy as like one of the oldest. You know, she went from being yeah. like like the youngest to, to one to of the, the oldest. oldest. Yeah. 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 And it's just, just a little. Or for it's hard to give like. up that TV money, man. That. <laughs> <laughs> for real it's a, it's what, a steady 20, gig 30 yeah. episode can yeah commitments i mean that's that's that is nothing to sneeze at no no i'd take it any day for sure <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> they're still of course just frustrated and and talking about not being able to do their party stacy reads her resolution which is to help others whenever possible and uh she remembers how she helped ruth buzzy ruth buzzy <laughs> <laughs> uh, a homeless lady uh who used to be a trombonist from the episode the great comeback she was like a trombone player that fell on hard times and now she's homeless and she helps her like reunite with her daughter and pretty much have like a huge makeover and and kind of come back and i think this is where they sing miracles and you can't get what you want till you know what you want which is a joe jackson yeah. song i didn't know this song i i, I don't I recognize it at all didn't recognize a lot of these songs yeah personally which from growing up but which reminds me do y'all have any of the albums the kids incorporated albums i didn't know they had albums i don't um it's it's one of those things like i want but i kind of don't want at the same time (laughs) i understand (laughs) it's like like picking up the old showbiz pizza uh you know medley albums the the vinyls it's like oh i want them i've got so much nostalgia but at the same time it's like am i gonna sit down and listen to this (laughs) So I have the first two. I, I don't have the the um, the last two, but they're okay. Uh, they're not bad. I, I, I'll say that. You know, it's very much like the uh, the showbiz pizza. Uh, that's like the perfect analogy. But at the same time, it's like at least they're songs that I kind of am into and kind of know. So like, you know, they sing Ghostbusters. There's like a whole Beatles medley. There's a, a Michael Jackson medley. They're they're actually really good. So. I was kind of bummed that they chose these particular songs. Like some of them are fantastic, but some of them are just like, this is one of the most obscure songs I've ever heard. I don't know this song. I have no emotional connection. So I'm just going to fast forward through this song, which is kind of what I did on that uh, Joe Jackson tune. Sorry, Ryan, if you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, with that song too, what, I, what I, reason that really got me because with this rewatcher that I did, Mm-hmm. That really blew me away that I didn't even realize who was in it until now was Mario Lopez. Oh yeah. Yeah. As He's the drummer all and a over dancer. The show. And I'm so like, as a kid, I didn't, it didn't, I never made the connection between kids incorporated and saved by the bell. Oh, no, it's perfect. You two won't even know I'm here. Oh, right. I never made that connection. And now I'm looking back, I'm going, that's Mario. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> yeah. that just blew me. Away. So that's why I was watching it. Cause I was actually watching Mario trying to go, just see it, what he did and did all this stuff. It was just fun to watch. Yeah. Mario. It was I mean, great because he kept popping up as like a member of the band. Like he'd be paying, playing bass in the background or he'd be on drums, drums or sometimes yeah. he'd just be he, dancing. Yeah, yeah. He was mainly drums when he was part of the band, if he wasn't dancing. Right. Right. But he did. You're right. He did play uh, some of the other instruments every once in a while, but, and then he was also a, a dancer, uh, which by the way, this, this was technically, uh, a standalone special. That's how it's listed in IMDb. Some yep. people consider it episode 14 of season three, but this was like his last episode. This was Martika's last episode. It was kind of like a send off. I think there were several other dancers that, that kind of uh, left after this as well before season four started filming. So there is something special, but that's when, when uh, Mario Lopez appeared on saved by the bell, the very first thing I said was, Hey, that's Mario. Because I, <laughs> I knew him from Kids Incorporated. <laughs> I just love that he has a history. He's sort of like a fly girl on this, kind of like Jennifer Lopez was on. 
in yeah. living color. Like, oh, where do we man. start? I want that T-shirt. I want Mario Lopez as a fly girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Let's well, see. Back then, I didn't pay that much attention to the background. I was mostly concentrated on the main character, so I didn't. Yeah. Didn't, like I said, it didn't click with me with Mario until just now. Right. Well, this is where Ryan. <laughs> now he's, you know, he realizes that hey, you know, we Riley's always been there for us. We haven't been good friends to him. The one thing that's that we've kept throughout all this is our friendship. So they decide they're going to go apologize. And this is where we get another song. And I think uh, that's what friends are for. But it's like the actual that's what friends are for. The one that's the Dion uh, Warwick one. The Dion mm-hmm. Warwick song. Yeah. And I should ever go away. Well, then close your eyes and try to feel the way we do today. And then if you can't remember. I actually I think Rod Stewart sings it as well, doesn't he? Probably. Yeah. I if he did, I don't remember it. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, but I don't ever remember hearing one from him. I always always remember the Dion one. Yeah, exactly. I, in this day and age, I swear to God, like I'm never surprised anymore when I find out like a song that I've totally like linked with one act or person like is right. actually like an older song. You know, it's oh, like yeah. Whitney Houston and Dolly Parton. Oh, right. Finding out that 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 Blondie is hanging on the telephone is a is a cover. <laughs> it's like what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I just assume now like it's yeah, it's probably a hit before it was a hit. <laughs> well, and so I think that's what happened. I think it was a Rod Stewart song that then Dionne Warwick and her super group or whatever it was covered. Covered it, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they haven't been good friends. So they're going to go, they they make their own resolution to be better friends than ever. And so they go apologize to him. And that's where he explains that I think the kid's uncle decided to let the kids have their New Year's party in the garage. And so they sing step by step which is another song I wasn't super familiar with, but that's because it's a Kids Incorporated original and it's mostly sung by Gloria and Ryan. Now, they did have a few original songs in here, but I think the ones that I always liked, of course, were the ones that I knew. Recognize, yeah. Yeah, yeah the ones the ones that you recognize that they got off their main hits from the radio. Those were the best. Right, well, but also mostly because I don't think the original songs were as good as like the, the kid video. Exactly. Songs. I was gonna say not yeah. not every kid band can be kid video. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, they if you don't have a uh, Saban and Livy doing the music exactly, for you, you yeah. know, uh, you're you're pretty much uh, <laughs> it's an uphill battle. So now that they have the place, we get a, a nice little music montage to to clean up, which is fantastic. But you always need a music montage to clean a place up like really quick. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the Muppets top that. um so they sing what wang everybody have fun tonight you know the wang chung by wang chung and um it kind of sags into their no that's that's actually the first no oh what do they those are actually the first songs that they play that's not what they sing that was the first that was the first two songs they did in the party oh in the party right 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 i don't remember what they sing when they're cleaning up then but yeah it might be it might be um some of the step-by-step too or something that's kind of playing over that scene i can't remember yeah, I can't either. I, I don't. I didn't take that good of notes. But, yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, they sing. They sing the Wang Chung. They sing uh, "Dancing on the Ceiling," Lionel Richie, and yep. uh, which again I thought was just a, a solid performance. Yep. And then they invite Riley up, and he, <laughs> I love it because he kind of he quickly he tries to get out of there quick. He's like, well, you know, thank you, but the best way to bring in the new years <laughs> is with another song <laughs> watching kids incorporated here yeah you, you don't want to see me <laughs> that, that would be me on stage he's like yep okay thanks bye <laughs> see ya <laughs> and so we get the nice little uh old lang syne and then they sing um uh, another kids incorporated original okay let's count it down for me you guys ready 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Should old acquaintance be 
Yeah, this I mean that's pretty much the whole special is mostly just flashbacks to this this one and, and that show and that episode and yeah, I mean I I think one of my favorite performances uh besides the the uh Cafferty's tune was the uh, Wild Wild Life. I actually like that song. Mhm. Just cuz I'm, I'm a huge Talking Heads fan and yeah. That just that one was great. great. That was the one where I felt like Ryan's um slacky guitar playing was the most egregious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely tell. And then you had Martika <laughs> trying to pretend she plays too. Yeah. Oh, that was. She had a rad guitar though. <laughs> yeah, yes, she did. Yeah. <laughs> there were some. There was some cool gear here. Like I wouldn't mind having some of the gear. It's like well, that one, and uh, like we were talking about on uh, the kid video that uh, that fiber optic guitar. I wouldn't mind having some of those, like mm. just hanging on my wall. You know. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, well, and, it, and it was like Kids Incorporated, and yeah, I think even Kid Video too that got me interested into trying to play. And actually, a little too late, talking to my dad about him teaching me before he died in ninety. Oh, so I he gotcha. was teaching me before that, and so it's like he never got to teach me how to play. So I just reverted to playing the music on air for radio. So the the these were also instrumental besides my dad for getting me into music. Because these these actually talk directly to me versus my dad, who were fifties and sixties rock. He gave me the background of good music, like fifties and sixties rock and stuff like that. And this talked to me with the music that was of my age. So, I gotcha. Now, one thing I really want to bring up before we we get onto the last bits here, but if you go to the uh, Wikipedia page for for uh, Kids Incorporated for casting characters, they left off Ryan Lambert and. I I feel like that's just a, a huge faux pas, you know. <laughs> maybe maybe he edited it out himself. I mean, I it could know. it could be, yeah, it could be. Uh, I don't even I don't even see Jerry on there. Yeah, well, he doesn't even have like a, a Wikipedia page either, so that's probably why. Um, but even if he doesn't, you can still mention him in it. Yeah. I mean, he well, was one of the main characters. Well, especially if Ryan was there for what like three or four well, seasons. I mean, feels yeah. like both, both Jerry and Ryan is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it feels like they should probably. I mean, I know Kid Video is an ensemble that share lead, you know, lead vocal duties, but also, you know, I feel like he's kind of almost the front man while he's playing guitar. So it, I feel like it he should definitely be. sings on a lot of the songs when he's he, there. He really does. Like, so, yeah. uh, but you're right. Maybe, maybe he just edited himself out. <laughs> maybe. It's one of those things, too, where it's like, you know, when you get to like Wikipedia and stuff like that, it's like Ryan Lambert, Fergie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one yeah. of those things where some people just overshine, you know, and it's well, hard to, yeah. Well, I know, I know which one I would prefer, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the guy. Yeah. Well, especially once she joined the Black Eyed Peas. I think she was in, uh, she also had a little group, Wild Orchid. Group with, Wild uh, Orchid. Yeah. With one yeah. of the Renee. other, with, with Renee. Renee. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot of, a uh, lot of stars coming out of that show. So it's like that one, Mickey Mouse mm. Club. Shanice had had a, I think she was a what hint wonder from the eighties too, or maybe early nineties. She was a dancer on there too. Mm. And oh, she yeah. had, she had a big, hit, uh, at least one hit. I think she was like a one hit wonder from like the early nineties. I think it's like, I love the way you smile or something like that. Oh, I, I got remember, you. Well, I, I know, remember the name. I don't know, but I know, uh, Brittany Murphy and Scott Wolf had made guest appearances on it as well. Plus, yep. um, uh, Florence Henderson, like guessed it on it. Uh, I mean, David Hasselhoff was a guest on it. So, and then I don't remember this episode at all, but apparently Paul Rodriguez was on it as well. So, oh wow, yeah, maybe Billy it was before Blank. a million to Juan. Billy Blanks. There's <laughs> another name. Billy Blanks. He was <laughs> the <on> Thai bow guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but this is another show that probably because of all of the rights issues will probably never be re-released oh yeah yeah definitely not yeah which again is a shame because i I'd, I'd love to see some of these like remastered and done well it's like you oh, watch yeah. them on youtube or or daily motion or you know vimeo or any of those and it's like it's just a nice little fuzz you know mm-hmm. where someone recorded it off their vhs it's totally off their vhs yep. yeah <laughs> exactly shout out to uh tammy coleman i know she's um I'm not going to say I'm the biggest Monster Squad fan. I think actually Tammy is the biggest Monster Squad fan, but she's also the biggest Kids Incorporated fan. And I think a lot of that has to do with Ryan Lambert, but shout out to her for uploading this on YouTube. So nice. (laughs) Yes. Thank you very much. Because that's how we were able to cover it. But 
You know, what would you guys say would be your hap hap happiest uh, memory or moment with uh, Kids Incorporated? Well, mine would be just thinking back to the days of sitting in my buddy's bedroom because he had a TV in his room because he was lucky like that. And uh, <laughs> watching watching these every day almost like after school or just sitting here with my, my best friend watching them, just being in awe, getting my first crush on Renee and, and <laughs> Martika and all them and just wanting to be in that situation. But yeah, also knowing that I am very – have stage fright from hell and we'll never get up there, but it would be so fun to be that way. I did. Hey, but if you learn just, anything from Martika, man, it's to face your fears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gotcha. That's cool. What about you, Sean? Uh, I think for me, it's um, again, uh, watching stuff with Ryan Lambert. I'm just glad I got to, I, I've never specifically watched this episode. So I was glad I got to see it. Cause we got an all hands in the circle break moment where they they decide that they're gonna go uh, you know apologize to riley and everything and right. make it all better and it's it echoes a very similar scene of the monster squad so I, i'm just glad i get you know like the dog get up here anyway yeah another point of reference for ryan lambert doing that i don't know <laughs> it, it made me smile while watching it <laughs> that's awesome yeah for me uh so my brother was also a huge kids incorporated fan he's two years younger than i am and he's like into music. He produces uh, musicals and shows and he's written a bunch of stuff. I mean, it's, he's he's a really talented guy. And so I remember we have a picture of him wearing a, a shirt that says the kid. And it's got like the, you know, that faux leather, like kind of patch on the shoulders. It's like navy blue. And then it's like a white shirt. And uh, he's wearing like red shorts. And he was like trying to be like the kid. And so... Like, I just remember him dressing like that. And every time he'd wear that shirt, it reminded me of uh, Kids Incorporated. So, or every time I watch Kids Incorporated, it reminds me of him as well. So uh, that's probably mine. But uh, now we come to my favorite part of the show, which is a little segment I call Gag Me with a Spoon. So this is where we do our best impression of our least favorite part of the episode. As the guests, I'll let you go first. Uh, whoever would like to go first, just kind of set up the scene a little bit for us. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Uh Obviously, this is a, a New Year's one. And there's a, a ton of resolutions in this. So there's a groan-inducing pun that I absolutely love when um, it's it's like a it's a cut to commercial break right before they get to uh, Stacy's uh, resolution. But uh, the kids basically like talking about like, oh, I wish we could do the party. And Ryan Lambert's like, give it up, kid. When it comes to tonight's party, there is no resolution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> This one was tough for me. I really, be, be, between, I mean, just looking at this from adult eyes versus my kids' eyes, it, there's a bunch of stuff you could almost <laughs> do just by the way it's written. But it, I don't know. I mean, between how they just treated Riley, I mean, just not even listening to him. I mean, uh, I don't have anything specific on that, but just that's probably the worst because it's like, I mean, yeah, I know kids can be self-centered but i mean come on <laughs> somebody's got to speak up especially the older two like right like ryan and and martika those two mm. could actually be more a little more um, i mean i get it of what's going on i get it i was supposed to play a, a pretty huge gig uh right before covid hit and so uh i rehearsed a, a few times at the band and it was it was great and then it was like oh no we're all locked down now so everything was canceled and, and so i I get where they're coming from. Like you put in all that rehearsal time and then it's oh, like, yeah. Oh man. That's yeah. But did you make friends with COVID in the end? <laughs> <laughs> I, it took me six months, but eventually I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, COVID never really liked me. COVID never, never got to me. So, Oh, I got to oh. lucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. Now mine wasn't, my brother got it like super bad. I mean, he could like barely walk, um Oof. for like a week and a half something like that i i was fine i felt fine completely but i had to stay home so it was kind of like a free vacation which i kind of dug <laughs> but uh no no i i get where you're coming from now mine is actually a line from gloria this is after the kids resolution you know he talks about how he can't help it he just he, he likes the attention and so gloria says well before you can become a superstar you have to work on becoming a super person 
<laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I see what you did there. You know, but G.I. Joe taught us that knowing is half the battle. What do you guys think is the other half? Not using your experimental ice cream machine right before a big New Year's Eve show. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yep. a good one. That's fair. Yep. Uh, mine, mine is uh, maybe if you're going to play lead guitar, learn how to vary your fingers up on the frets so it looks like you're actually playing. <laughs> yeah, nowadays they'd actually have them like learn how to play even though they're not playing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's for me. Uh, those are both good. But for me, uh, if no one's half the battle, the other half is just singing songs when you're cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Make it go by faster. Uh, guys, this has been fun talking about this this show here. Um, but tell me about your shows. Uh, why don't we start with uh, start? Why don't we start with you, Sean, of uh, Cult Film Club? Yeah, uh, Cult Film Club is uh, my number one podcast. I do that with uh, my wife and my friend Paxton Holly. Uh, 80s films mostly, but we also dip into the 70s and 60s and 90s. All the films that we love to death. Um, we've got uh, Cool as Ice coming up soon. Oh, <laughs> so if nice. you're a Vanilla Ice fan. Ooh, vanilla Ice, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we've got a couple sister shows on the same uh, podcast feed. Um, Paxton, my my co-host on Cold Film Club, has his uh, he does a show about uh, reading movie novelizations, and he breaks them down, <laughs> which is good. great. Yeah. And then uh, during the Halloween season, we have a like a mini season of a show called Crestwood House, which is like um, pre slasher, pre eighties horror movies. So everything from like silent up until the seventies. Nice. And uh, you also do um, was a plastic rocket pop. Yeah, plastic rocket pop is my like my personal blog website, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of eighties nostalgia. It's it's uh, I used to run a site called Branded in the Eighties, and right. I basically ported that over to plastic rocket pop. It kind of got rid of the eighties theme, so I can free myself up to not have to keep trying to think about stuff to write about with the eighties. <laughs> I painted myself into a corner that I, I kind of regretted uh, fifteen I, years on. I feel that, yeah. <laughs> And what about you, Sean? Well, listeners of your podcast probably know where they can all find me. I mean, I've been on here enough, and they also can find your podcast, Jerry, on mine. It's Christmas Podcast. Podcast is the podcast, and it's on christmaspodcast.com. <laughs> Try saying that sentence three times without the word uh, podcast. See how empty it is. But anyway, go ahead. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but basically, yeah, we're like you said in the beginning of this, I am the hype guy for all uh, Christmas podcasts, including totally rad Christmas. And, and we have like 41 other podcasts on our website that we, that we hype up. It's been just ridiculous these past few weeks with Christmas and everybody dropping. I mean, I I've had my, my podcasts normally are around, uh, between 10 to 15 minutes if I do a week. Uh, these past two, three weeks have been close to a half hour long. Right. So many, so many podcasts out there, so many great podcasts out there with all sorts of different uh, of topics in there, from books with art to you with the 80s to Brian with past to just feeling good with Todd from um, Christmas Clatter to, I mean, there's a bunch. You got uh, other specials, a different look with, um, Mike from Advent Calendar House, you got mm-hmm. general movies review with Tiz the podcast, et cetera, et cetera. I know I'm missing a lot, and I'm sorry, you guys, I can't mention you all. Otherwise, we'd be here for another 15, 20 minutes. But <laughs> right. I hype you guys all up. I love all your podcasts, and uh, it's basically one central site to find all your guys' podcasts. Basically, we link to your guys' websites, and they can find your episodes to listen to and, and download and give you guys all the love you guys deserve. Yep. And I think we pretty much have um, officially moved the Christmas podcast network to just your website. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I mean, everybody is welcome on the, on the sites and stuff and go to the site. If you have a Christmas podcast um, for me to listen to and see if we can make it a part of it and what's going on. And we've had links to all that stuff at christmaspodcast.com. That's basically the best place to, to get a hold of me and everything. So right on. Yep. So guys, go check it, go check it out. So much cool stuff with cult film club. Brandon, the eighties was one of my favorite sites. Um, I mean, it's just amazing. And you can catch Sean on uh, Wolfman's got nards as well. Uh, which yeah, is- if you're, if you're a monster squad fan, you'll probably find me. I'm actually on the official, the, the latest, um, like monster squad has been out of print for a while, uh, mm-hmm. at least in the U S and they finally released a, a 4k blu-ray that's uh, I'm on. 
It's crazy. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> wow, that that's happened. amazing. Yeah, that's pretty. That I mean, that's just that's amazing, man. It yeah, really as a is. fan, like I can't imagine a better like uh, getting to know the guys, and that that was like the best gift that Andre could ever, Andre Gower, the, the main kid in that, could ever have given me. It's <laughs> just involving me in his documentary. It was amazing. <laughs> and yeah, the, and it's a great documentary as well. It really is. You don't even have to be a Monster Squad fan to Mm-mm. appreciate. No, it's, them. it's it's, it's just, just about loving movies, right? It's well done. Uh, oh man, the part with when they talk of, about um, uh, Brent and Chalem. Yeah, it just yeah. Gets, it gets me every time. Like mm-hmm. I've seen it like three or four times now, and every time, oh man. Okay, I got to move on because <laughs> <laughs> get emotional just thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. So um, yes, go check every all the stuff out. You, you won't regret it. You'll have a lot of fun. Uh, but on that note, let me just say thanks again, guys. This was this was fun. No, this was great. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. And I'll end it with, hey, look what I found. Kids Incorporated's New Year's resolutions. So check us out on our social media pages, which you can find at linktree.com slash totally rad Christmas. And if you're feeling like Kids Incorporated playing their New Year's gig, leave us a review on iTunes. It helps us reach more people and spread some rad holiday cheer. Now, don't forget to check out our merch shop on Public and our super dope website, totallyradchristmas.com. The best way to welcome the beginning of the new year would be with another song. Later, dudes.